that feeling like maybe those extra fries weren't the best idea. Like your brain's a little foggy after certain foods. Yeah, I think we've all been there. Well, turns out there might be something to that. Today, we're really diving deep into some research about how the food we eat, especially things like meat and dairy, could actually be impacting how well different parts of our brains talk to each other. It's like the brain's own internal Wi-Fi signal, and what we put in our stomachs might be messing with the connection. Interesting. I'm definitely game to learn more about this. And to help us unpack it all, we've got our expert here. Welcome. This research we're looking at today focuses on a specific group of people, the MIFR community in Mexico. What's so unique about them and why are they perfect for this kind of study? So the MIFA people live in a pretty remote part of Mexico, which means their lifestyle is much more traditional, especially compared to, say, life in a big city. Makes sense. And importantly for this study, their access to animal products, things like meat and dairy, yeah. isn't as common as what we might see in other places. They rely a lot on subsistence farming. So not exactly a steak and eggs every morning kind of diet. No, not quite. And this is what makes studying them so interesting. It gives researchers a really unique opportunity to zero in on how animal product consumption on its own might be affecting that gut-brain connection without a bunch of other factors getting in the way. It's like a natural experiment. I like that, a natural experiment. Okay, so lesser and dairy overall. But the researchers still divided the children into groups based on how much animal protein and fat they were eating. How did they figure that out? They used food questionnaires, basically asking the kids about what they ate on a regular basis. From there, they estimated how much animal protein and fat each child was taking in each month. Based on that, they divided the kids into two groups, low and high consumption. And I'll tell you the difference in intake between those two groups definitely significant, not just a coincidence, which really makes you pay attention to the findings. Okay, so we've got our two groups with different levels of animal products in their diets. But how did the researchers actually see what was happening in their brains? Okay, so we've got our two groups with different levels of animal products in their diets. But how did the researchers actually see what was happening in their brains? Well, they use a technique called quantitative electroencephalography. Say that five times fast. Right. It's a mouthful. Q-E-E-G, for short. Much better. Basically, it measures the electrical activity in the brain. You can almost think of it like eavesdropping on the chatter between different parts of the brain. So they're listening in on the brain's conversations. But how do you make sense of all that chatter? Imagine your brain like an orchestra, right? Different sections, different instruments, all working together to make music, or in this case, thoughts and actions. The researchers looked specifically at certain brainwave frequencies. Delta, theta, alpha, and beta. Each one has its own rhythm and plays a specific role. These frequencies can tell us how well different parts of the brain are communicating, like how in sync those instruments in the orchestra are. So stronger brain waves mean better communication. In a way, yes. And what they found is that those kids who ate more animal products, they had stronger connectivity in their brain networks. This is especially true in the alpha and beta frequencies, which are super important for things like paying attention, processing what you see, problem solving, all that good stuff. Wow. So what a child eats could be affecting how well they focus in school or how they learn. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And this connection is even more important when we think about the fact that these kids are still growing. Their brains are still developing. It's like their diets are literally shaping their brains. Exactly. This is fascinating. But we can't forget about the other half of this whole equation here. We got to talk about the gut, what was going on in there. Okay, so here's where things get really interesting. When they looked at what kinds of bacteria were living in the children's guts, you know, the microbiome, there actually wasn't a big difference between the high and low animal product groups. Wait, so even though they were eating differently, their gut bacteria looked basically the same? Yeah, pretty surprising, right? Right. But, and this is a big but, even though the types of bacteria were similar, there was a big difference in how connected they were within the gut microbiome. Remember those brain waves we talked about? Oh. Kind of a similar idea here. Okay, you're really piquing my interest here. Tell me more about this whole gut connection thing. So just like with those brain waves, we can actually measure connectivity in the gut microbiome. And what they found was that the kids who ate less meat and dairy, they had way lower connectivity in their gut network. And this actually mirrors what they saw happening in the brain. So it's not just about who's at the party in your gut. It's about how well they're all mingling. Exactly. It's like having a room full of people, but no one's talking to each other. And this lack of communication, this reduced connectivity, it can impact your health in a bunch of ways. 
So we've got these parallels, reduced connectivity in both the brain and the gut in the kids who ate fewer animal products. What's the big takeaway here? What does it all mean? It's pointing to this really complex connection between, well, what we eat, how well the gut microbiome is communicating, and then how our brains develop. All these things seem to be linked. Whoa, that's a lot to unpack. Right. And it makes you think. Your gut and brain are constantly talking to each other, sending signals back and forth. Like a highway of information. Exactly. Mood, behavior, how we learn, even our immune system. All these things can be affected by what's going on in the gut-brain communication superhighway. And if the signals get messed up, well, it can cause problems. So a little static on the gut-brain channel could mean big consequences for our overall health. That's the idea. And it's not just about kids. Even though that's who this study looked at, this connection, gut microbiome, brain function, what we eat, it matters throughout our entire lives. It really does make you stop and think twice about what you're putting into your body. For sure. And, you know, the more we learn about the microbiome, the more we realize just how important that gut brain connection really is for everyone. Mm -hmm. This research is just one piece of the puzzle. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. It's not just about what types of bacteria are living in your gut. It's how well they're all working together. And to see that reflected in brain activity, it's like, wow, our bodies are incredible. Totally. It oh. really highlights just how interconnected everything is. It's amazing. But you're right. This is just one study. What are some of the big questions researchers still have about this whole thing? Well, for starters, we need to look at the long-term implications. This study focused on kids. But what about adults? How do these connections, animal products, gut connectivity, brain connectivity, how do they change as we get older? And maybe even more important, can we improve communication between the brain and gut through diet? I mean, that would be amazing. The future of personalized nutrition and gut health. What an exciting time for science. It really is. Each new study, like this one, opens up even more questions, more things to explore. And that's what makes it so fascinating. We're always learning new things about ourselves, about how our bodies work. It's a journey. And sometimes it's a delicious one as long as we're making smart choices. Well, this deep dive has definitely given us a lot to digest, both literally and figuratively. Big thanks to our expert for breaking it all down for us today. Until next time, everyone, keep those brains buzzing, those guts happy, and we'll catch you on our next deep dive.